I'm Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up's products for Elizabeth Craft Designs. And today I'll be teaching how to make this. So this is a technique video where I'm going to take the twist circle pop-up die and I'm going to modify it a little bit so that it actually allows for two shapes to pop up at the same time. Now in my case those two shapes are spider webs and I'm doing this as a Halloween card for our September designer challenge. You could definitely do this same technique and change out those shapes into something else. But since I am doing a Halloween card today, vellum spider webs are going to be perfect. I'm starting with squares of vellum, five and a half inch square on the big one, three and a half inch square on the smaller one. So to convert this into a spider web, I'm first going to fold it in half, then in half again. And then I'll take that square and just fold it in half diagonally. Now in all that folding, don't lose track of where the center of the square is because that's the point you need to keep. It is the other point that gets cut off. And what you want to do is you want to kind of trace on almost a little arc, something like this, to create that outer edge of the spider web. And then all it needs is just a pair of scissors that's strong enough to cut through those eight layers of vellum to cut right on that pencil line and remove that bottom half chunk of the triangle. What that'll do is it'll just create all of those outer spikes of the spider web. And you can see how that's going to come together. But I need to fold that back up again because I need to cut all of the inner parts out of it. I'm going to fold the vellum until I have just two triangles side by side. And then I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw that same triangle shape a little bit inside the lines. And I'm going to do that in both triangles. So what that'll do is it'll create the spokes of the web that are coming out from the center as well as the piece of web that goes all the way around the perimeter. And now I'm going to draw the web strings that are within those triangles. And I'm going to put two web strings in each triangle. So each one's going to need two arced lines about the width of everything else. So it looks pretty consistent. And now what I want to do is cut out all of the vellum in between those pencil lines. Now I think the easiest way to do that is just to take a hole punch and punch a hole somewhere in each of the areas that I want to remove and then use a good pair of detail scissors. And I'm using my favorite, which are the Elizabeth Craft Designs fine pointed scissors. I'll erase any remaining pencil lines and then when I open this up, I will reveal my large vellum spider web. Okay, lightning fast, I'm going to repeat that exact same process for my three and a half inch square to make a small version of the spider web. Now on this one, since it is smaller, I'm only going to put one little string inside each triangle rather than two. It just makes it a little bit easier to cut out. But other than that, I'm doing the exact same process to make myself a smaller version of the spider web from the three and a half inch square. So my newest character die is Midnight the Bat, but for today's card, he's going to be converted into Midnight the Spider. To make my spider, I'm going to need four of the detail layers from Midnight the Bat, and I'm going to cut all four of those out of black cardstock. Pop It Up's dies can be cut in any of the major die cutting machines. Today I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot, and I will need to cut four of these Midnight the Bat detail layers to make my spider. So choose one of the detail layers that's going to be the body of the spider. And the first thing to come off would be the ears, and then you can also cut off the feet at the bottom. So for his top legs, I can use the little tips at the end of his wings, and I can just cut along that same contour, about a, a leg width apart, until I get to the little cutout line. And that will define his little leg out on the outside edge. And then from each of those little points, I actually am just going to trim now, again, just sort of the width of the leg towards the inside of his body. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the bottom and just kind of round up. If you think about a little teardrop shape, maybe something like you would think of with an insect or a bee or anything like that, that's the shape that you're looking for to be the body of the spider. Now the other three bats are going to be used only to make those same legs. So again, I'm starting from the outside tip of his wing, trimming about a leg's width apart. And now this time I don't need to keep a body, so I can just trim all the way across and I can also take off his head. So this is just about making legs. And I'll just trim that in the middle so it's two individual legs. Flip over my bat, so I'm working on the back of the bat slash spider right now to add those legs onto the back of the body. And I'm just using a little glue for that. 
and then I can just put those into whatever position I want. And now I am just going to repeat that exact same process two more times so that I have eight legs on my spider. Now for my videos, I always tell you everything that I've used in the video and all those supply links are always shown both in the about section on YouTube, so below the video if you're actually on my YouTube channel right now, or you can click the little information bubble that's in the top right corner and that'll take you to the blog post where you'll also find links to all those supplies. So if you fall in love with say the glue bottle that I'm using or these little cute fine pointed scissors that I've got or the adhesive, anything that I've used on the card, I will link those supplies on both the blog post and in the about section on YouTube. So I'm still working on the back side of the spider and I need a piece of black cardstock. I'm just gonna rough cut a piece of black cardstock to go there behind the eye holes so that when I add the actual die cut eyes, which are a little bit smaller than those holes, that they have something to stick to. So normally they would stick to a shadow layer that comes with the bat, but we're not using the shadow layer today. So I just needed to add a piece of black cardstock behind there. And then I'll just get those eyes put into position and as a final cute little touch, I'll add the little bow tie. So that little dice comes with the Midnight the Bat set. It can be used as a bow tie or it can also be used as a hair bow. So now I've got my spider, I've got my webs, and it's time to modify the twist circle platform. With Pop It Up's dies, you always choose your card size. So I'm using some black cardstock. My card size is five inches by six inch when folded. It's unfolded now so that I can line up the pop up die from the twist circle set right over the fold of that card, which is easy to do because the die has those little alignment nubs. So training the twist circle platform is really easy. Just fold your card like normal in the center and then back fold it so that you're learning that center fold in both directions. When you look at the cuts, you'll see that on one side it's a box cut and the other side's straight. It's the box cut side that you want to fold towards and there's a diagonal fold there that goes through both sides so you can just fold on that diagonal and give it a really good press. And then you want to flip the card around because that's where the box cut is on the other side. And again, you always want to fold towards the box cut. And then you're just going to press down on that diagonal fold so that it really learns those folds. So that trained the fold so that as you now fold your card in the usual manner again, if you stick your thumbs underneath those platforms, they will start to raise up and go into the card as the card is closed and open. So that's really what you want, is you want to see that box cut on that inner platform on the upper left for the top one and the lower right for the bottom one. And now it's time to cut the upper half of our platform. The upper half of the platform also scores the cardstock in three locations. So it's been scored up the middle and I'll just want to find that as a mountain fold. And then it's also been scored at the base where the two feet are and both of those folds will also be a mountain fold. So when you fold all three like mountains, it creates this little mountain. And those little feet are going to get adhesive underneath them and they're gonna hook in beside, uh, underneath those box areas of that base platform, and that's what's gonna create the top. So you will notice on this little upper half of the platform that it also travels from upper left to lower right, and it will just do that naturally. It's actually cut at a diagonal. Now, if for some reason, when you're putting this together, it doesn't seem to line up, it's possible that you inverted your folds. So perhaps your upper platform you made valley folds and so what that did is it reversed it so it's going now from the upper right to the lower left it's an easy fix just re reverse your folds and then it'll match again but if you've done it correctly it should be traveling from upper left to lower right and that will create this fun little twisting platform now normally i'd be done but i'm modifying the mechanism today so for that i'm going to need some strong strips of cardstock and what makes them strong is i'm going to cut them out of black cardstock but then glue two to each other so those strips are starting at three eighths of an inch wide and three and a half inches long and like i said i'm just gluing two together and that's just about keeping them nice and strong for the mechanism now where these arms are going to attach to the mechanism is actually on the same side, that box cut side, the same side where you attach the upper platform. Easiest thing to do, turn the card around, then you can see what you're doing. Add some glue on the side of the platform that has the box cut, it has the tab, so you've actually add, added glue right over the top of the tab that you just used to attach your upper platform. 
and then just go in there and really give it a good press because you want that nice and secure on there. I go ahead and go all the way down throughout that entire base. So what that means is I'll probably have a little corner of it sticking over my diagonal fold, but once my glue is set, I can just go in with a pair of scissors and trim off any portion of it that sticks beyond my diagonal fold. So the arm's gonna travel with the rest of the mechanism. It's just going to twist up and lay flat. And I'm gonna repeat that exact same process to add the arm on the other side. And again, just making sure I'm putting it on the same side as the box cut. So you can see this kind of little W that's created by adding these arms to the twist circle. And you can decorate inside those two new folds now with pretty much any type of shape. And what I'm gonna do is use the spider webs that I cut, but you could definitely start thinking about maybe putting some circles in there or some squares, all sorts of things that you could do to decorate inside those Ws. So there are holes in my card from where I cut the base platform, and normally those would just be covered up by your backing card, but I'm not sure yet what color I'm gonna use for my backing card, and I definitely want the inside of the card to be all black underneath that platform. So what I'm gonna do is just add a small backing card, just enough to cover the holes that were left by the pop-up, and that way later on I can add a full backing card or a colored one or double-sided paper or whatever I want, and it won't change the color underneath the platform inside the card. So the concept of this new mechanism is you've got these two new pop-up cards inside the card, and each one of those cards can have a shape attached to it, as long as that shape has a fold up the middle that corresponds to the fold of that new little card. So I've added the glue up my two sides of my new little card, and then I'm gonna go in there with my small web and attach that, just making sure that the center of the web is right down in the center of that new little card that it's been created. And the first time I close it, I may have to kind of give it a little twisting help to kind of learn its location. But usually after you've helped it that first time, it will remember what it's going to do and so it will open and close quite nicely. Now it was just a personal choice for me, but I decided to have a smaller web on the bottom card and then a larger one on the top one. And that way the top one actually overhangs the bottom one a little bit. So that's definitely something you can play around with. You know, it doesn't mean that those two shapes have to exactly match in either shape or size. You can really have fun with this mechanism playing around with how you're gonna decorate basically those two pop-up cards that are inside your card. Now the one thing is, is I probably shouldn't have done glue on both sides at the same time because what happened is my glue on the one side dried in the meantime and then it didn't adhere all the way. So I've just added some more glue closed it to make sure that it is attached on that side. And this is definitely one of those mechanisms that is gonna make you wanna open and close the card a bunch of times. It's really a fun effect to see those webs kind of collapse down into the card and then pop up as the card is opened. Okay, I want my spider that's on the top web to be as far up in the card as possible. I decided I want him way up in the air, so I need to choose this location in the closed position because I want him to still say stay hidden when the card is closed. So what I can do is kind of peel back to where I can have access to the upper part of that web and just add some adhesive there to the front of that big web and I'm gonna slide my spider in and put him so that his head is right on the edge of the card in the closed position. And that way I know he is as high as he can be when the card is open but still hidden when the card is closed. And obviously it's fun to open and close this card because I keep doing it three and four times after every single step. So I've decided this card needs a second spider, and I've got a little issue here because I've got this overhang of my big web over the top of my small web, and I really wanted my spider sticking up on the small web. But what I realized I could do is I could just pierce a hole in the large web, basically at the junction point. So where the small web meets the large web, I could pierce a hole in the large web and then kind of lengthen that out as a slit using my little detail scissors. And what that would allow me to do is get just the tip of his body the base of his body through that little slit and that would give me a spot where I could attach it to the bottom web, which is really what I wanted to attach to. And I'll need to weave his legs kind of through the upper web so that they kind of stay in that same plane as the upper part of the bottom web. But there's different ways to do that. I can just, you know, in different positions, he can be tilted at an angle, all sorts of things. And when I get him in position I like, I'm gonna attach one of his legs to the spider web and the base of his body to that bottom spider web. 
So this did have an element of danger involved because I was talking about two spiders with spindly legs and they end up pretty close to each other in the closed position. So I was a little worried about their legs getting tangled together, but it didn't happen. They never ever tangled their legs. It just worked out perfectly. So now I can basically just have fun decorating and I'm going to use the Halloween scene die. This is a great accessory die from my collection. It has a spider web and a spider and I've cut several of the webs out of vellum and I'm attaching those to the big webs. Now I may have been taxing my mechanism to do such a large web, but because it's vellum, it's forgiving. However, as I stiffened it up with more than more of those spider webs, I noticed that the points at the edge of the spider web were just crumpling too much. When I closed it, they were kind of hitting. I didn't like that, so I decided what I would do is I would fold them in so that I would have more of a blunt folded edge where it first hits the card when the card is being closed so that it would have more of a tendency to kind of hit that card and want to slide into its closed position and I wouldn't have to give it any help. So all I did is just fold over a little bit of those tips at the edge of the spider web and then what happens is that little folded edge tends to just slide now as the card is closed, it will find its closed position. So now it's just a matter of continuing to add decorations to my sculpture, to my pop-up sculpture. One of the things I did was stamp a greeting, spooky Halloween greetings from the Halloween clear stamps onto one of the circles that comes included with the twist circle die set. Now I want to have this in a position that is hidden when the card is closed but hanging off the web. So I'm going to test that with some temporary tape by attaching it when it's in the closed position so I know it's in a position that will be hidden and then giving it a couple open and closes just to make sure that it's not creating a weird catch point or anything that I wouldn't like before I glue it in permanently. I went stash diving to find some Halloween papers and found a couple styles in orange and I thought orange would be a nice way to put corner in the background of the card so that those black shimmer sheet spiders that I had cut and decorated the sculpture would show up better against that orange shining through the webs. And then I also added a couple little strips on the outside. With pop-up cards, I always design the insides first. That's where the magic is, that's how they're going to be displayed. And then for the fronts of the cards, I usually just use my leftover materials and do a simple lead-in with the same type of colors and elements. So I use the leftover pattern paper as a backing card, and then I'm going to go back to those circles that come with the twist circle and one of the stamps from the same clear stamp set, same vellum web, same little shimmer sheet spider, just a little lead-in to the magic that's inside. Well, I hope that you feel inspired to try this for yourself. If you need to know about any of the supplies I used in today's video, you can find them in the description box on YouTube, along with a link to the blog post. If you follow me on Facebook, Karen Berniston Designer, you will be treated to daily inspiration. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.